left by COVID-19 will undoubtedly be profound, although the colors of these memories will be unique for each of you. And so while my college experience, particularly in my senior year, was quite different from yours, I would like to briefly reflect on five issues that have been important to me since graduation that might actually be worth at least considering as you leave Emory. First, expect the unexpected. As we all have had the profound experience with COVID-19, this truism is the wake-up call that can rouse us from complacency and galvanize our lives. The unexpected may be a difficult challenge such as a pandemic or simply be an unanticipated opportunity. At any moment, you might be prepared to enter uncharted territory, to expect the unexpected challenge or opportunity, especially in those areas of your work or life that actually might seem quite settled. So let me describe a few personal examples of such challenges and opportunities that profoundly impacted the direction of my own career and my own life. In 1968, I finished my training in internal medicine at the New York Hospital Cornell Medical Center. That same year, noted public health scholars were opining that with the advent of antibiotics, vaccines, and public health measures, that the war against infectious diseases had been won. Biomedicine, they said, should turn its focus to other areas of research and public health. Coincidentally, I was just on my way to begin an infectious diseases fellowship at the National Institutes of Health. And so I was driving, as I was driving from New York City to the NIH in Bethesda, Maryland, I reflected on the message of these pundits. I began to feel somewhat unsure and regretful to say the least about my career choice. Was I actually entering a vanishing subspecialty? Fortunately for my career, but unfortunately and tragically for the rest of the world, even so-called pundits are not always correct. And indeed, in June of 1981, 40 years ago next month, I remember quite clearly sitting in my NIH office reading in the CDC's Morbidity and Mortality Weekly report about a handful of cases of an unusual pneumonia among gay men living in Los Angeles. A month later, when 26 additional cases of gay men from Los Angeles, San Francisco, and New York City, with not only this unusual pneumonia, but also other rare infections and cancer were described in a second MMW report, I remember feeling chills, literally, up and down my spine. We were dealing with a brand new deadly infectious disease. And so against the advice of many of my colleagues and mentors, I decided right there and then to make an abrupt turn in my career and investigate the pathogenesis of this mysterious disease that was devastating the lives of young men. The emergence of the AIDS pandemic and my decision to embrace change transformed my professional career, if not my entire life. Since then, I have witnessed the continual threat of emerging and re-emerging infectious diseases. As the director of NIAID, I've had the opportunity to be involved in the research response to major infectious disease outbreaks, including the threat of bioterrorism with the anthrax attacks right after 9-11, the 2002 SARS pandemic, the 2009 influenza pandemic, when an Ebola outbreak emerged in 2013 to quickly engulf West Africa, the disease briefly touched our own shores. And four patients with Ebola were treated by your own specialists here at Emory, and a handful treated by me and my colleagues at NIH. Fortunately, the Ebola pandemic was quelled. 
Not long thereafter, however, Zika virus emerged in the Americas and Ebola reemerged in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And now we are facing COVID-19. Now, obviously, not every opportunity or challenge that you will encounter is going to influence your career and your lives or is be as dramatic as a frightening infectious disease outbreak. However, please believe me that you will confront the same types of unpredictable events that I've experienced regardless of what directions your careers or your lives take. And so expect the unexpected. And when you can meet the challenge and seize the relevant opportunities as they arise. Next, COVID-19 has shown a bright light on our own society's failings. Our country's experience with COVID-19 has not only upended our own lives, but it has uncovered a stark reality and failing of our own society. The unacceptable disparities in health experienced by minority groups, especially African-Americans, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Many members of minority groups have a much greater risk of COVID-19, often because of the nature of the jobs that many of them have as essential workers in society. More importantly, when people of color get infected with SARS-CoV-2, they more likely will develop a severe consequence of the infection. And this is because minorities in general have a greater incidence and prevalence of underlying comorbid medical conditions, including hypertension, chronic lung disease, diabetes, and obesity that lead to a multifold increase in hospitalizations and deaths from COVID-19 compared with the general population. Now, very few of these comorbidities have racial determinants, almost relate to the social determinants of health, dating back to disadvantageous conditions that some people of color find themselves in from birth regarding the availability of an adequate diet, access to healthcare, and the undeniable effects of racism in our society. Let us promise ourselves that our corporate memory of this tragic reality, that an infectious disease disparately hospitalized and kills people of color, does not fade after we return to some form of normality. Writing this wrong will take a decades long commitment. I strongly urge you to be part of that commitment. Which brings me to my next point of discussion, public surface and social responsibility. I believe sincerely that regardless of our career paths, we cannot look the other way from pressing societal issues. Here in our own country, pockets of our society are undermined by poverty, drug abuse, violence, health disparities, inadequate education, racism, and often despair. Furthermore, as COVID-19 has clearly demonstrated, our lives are forever interconnected in a global society. We cannot turn our backs on the shocking and oft times preventable societal burdens in developing nations. Rampant disease, infant mortality, poverty, starvation, gender inequality, violence against women, and the reappearing specter of genocide. Now, some of you may devote your future careers and lives to directly addressing these societal issues, which Emory has well prepared you to do. But most of you likely will not. Yet, public service does not have to mean a profession or an avocation devoted entirely to public service. Public service can be incorporated into your lives regardless of your career choice into serious consideration and make it at least a part of your lives, which leads to my next point of discussion, leadership. You are graduating from a most extraordinary institution, one with first-rate faculty, 
many of whom in the medical school I have known personally who are helping to us to fight COVID-19. And so you are going to be the future leaders of our society. The costs borne because of COVID-19 are enormous. Economically, millions of jobs lost and businesses destroyed and close to 600,000 deaths in the United States alone and unimaginable physical and mental suffering for millions of others. It is a hurting and challenged world that we live in and the normal to which we will return may not be the same as the normal that we all recall before January 2020. Perhaps, however, it can be an even better normal and you can play an important role in shaping this new normal. You cannot do it alone, but it cannot be done without you and your leadership. It does not have, it necessarily have to be designated leadership. Leadership can be learned from many experiences and it takes many forms, including the quiet and subtle leadership of example. I have great faith that yours will be a generation that makes real change happen. You've grown up during a tumultuous decade, but you clearly value global and community mindedness. You model inclusiveness and embrace the strength of diversity. And you are experts at using social media to amplify your voices and to inform, influence, persuade, and call others to action. Which brings me to my final point, joy. I've been speaking to you over the past few minutes about the serious issues that we are facing in the context of this historic pandemic. Let me assure you, as a public health person who is devoting every waking hour and even some of my dreams to ending this pandemic, that it will end and we will come out of this stronger than we were before this challenge. I promise you that. And so putting this serious business aside for a moment, I wanna close with a reminder about the joyousness of life. Allow yourselves to cultivate this joy as much as you do your professional accomplishments. As you might expect, different pursuits and activities provide joy in different ways to different people. Find your source of joy and happiness and fully embrace it. Congratulations to you, to your families and your loved ones. Good luck and God bless you. Well thank, you. well, thank you so much, Dr. Fauci, for joining us today. Let's give Dr. Fauci a big round of applause so he can hear us in Washington, D.C. Thank you. Thank you. And now it is my pleasure to introduce the chairman of the Board of Trustees of Emory University, Mr. Robert Goddard. And I just want to say thank you to Bob Goddard